I started to learn to swim when I was 29 years old and the only reason I learned to swim is my buddy had me booked into a scuba diving course in Australia the open water scuba diving course and one of the requirements was that you must be able to swim I don't know 50 or 100 meters and unfortunately I couldn't swim and I had to go get swim lessons and it took me two years of swimming lessons um, to be pretty confident in the water. Today it's 8.8 .8 degrees water, water temperature at the moment, uh, which is not bad for this month actually. About three weeks ago it was down to 5.8 degrees centigrade. Um, and that's that's cold. That was for November. So lots of hot tea. So <laughs> Swim went well today. Um, it's only a short swim. Again, the water temperature is down low, so you have to restrict your distance. Um, I did just 1.4k, uh, 27 minute swim, so short swim. Tonight I'll go to the pool and I'll do a 2 or 3k pool session tonight as well, on top of that. Nine hundred and fifty kilometers or nine hundred fifty thousand meters of swimming done as of today for the year for two thousand and twenty. What do I get out of that a bloody hardship? <laughs> um, I suppose it's it's a challenge. Um, not, ma not many people have swum the English Channel. I've swum across Galway Bay six times. I've swum across Loch Gill three times. Um, I suppose it's just the challenge. And you got to put the training in, you got to do the meters. And if you don't do the meters, uh, any of these channels, it, it'll show you up pretty quick, you know. satisfaction of swimming across you know one of the busiest ship lanes in the world and well the most famous of all the channels is the English Channel I booked a slot to do a solo the boat was called the Gallivant and the pilot's name was Mike Warren swim across the English Channel a little bit longer than expected, but I went out on a spring tide. There's spring tide, there's neap tides. Um, spring tide is the biggest movement of water. A little bit longer than I expected, but hey, we got across. It's not about the time, it's about getting across. But it took me three years of training. You're very observant. You're watching people on the boat. Um, you're seeing what they're doing. You're watching the pilot. The pilot has eyes on you at all times. Your crew members are watching you. Um, you're, you can't see a whole pilot in the water. You can't see any other, because you're in the busy shipping lane, you can't see any other ships going up and down the channel. You may see one or two close by, but they need to be really close. But for the most part, all you're watching is that boat right beside you guiding you across the channel and the crew that's on that boat um, I remember Pascal Phelan was on my crew Paddy Mack he's a local here in Black Rock and Alice Flood who was the um, the first Galwegian actually to swim across the channel first woman and Pascal and Paddy were both seasick and at one stage Paddy was puking his guts out up the front of the boat and Pascal was puking his guts out at the back of the boat. So they hadn't a nice uh, a nice crossing at all. I, 
I get nervous before any swim or before any event really but I think the problem is you're looking at it you've trained for it and now you're going to be in that water for I don't know 14 15 odd hours and you're going to swim 21 miles okay you may have trained that throughout the week but now you're going to do it all on the one go and what happens is you overthink it you're thinking too far ahead you have to be positive um, I started my swim at 20 minutes before midnight Come on, Fargo. I had to jump off a boat in dark water uh, swim into shore, exit the water then a siren on the boat sounded and then I had to go back into that water and swim for several hours in pitch darkness and you definitely got to have your head screwed on so it's about two hours into my swim swim along happy enough and I hit this what I could describe as like a wet bag in the water and it was a jellyfish and it was just instant burning but you just have to keep going One thing I had on the boat is I had a whiteboard so people at home could relay messages to Alice and Alice was able to write down um, you know uh, various messages and support messages from at home so basically you have a tracker so when you're swimming across the channel people can see your exact location um, as, as you cross the channel so I knew everyone was watching at home and in Galway and all the local swimmers um, and you could see a lot of messages of support coming in from your coaches um, from basically everyone which was great because you thrive on that if you're getting positive uh, messages and positive feedback you, you, that to me it helps me um, to, to keep going you know um, I wasn't going to give up no way there was 10 boats out that day and only 5 was met across on that particular day um, so it wasn't an easy swim it got harder towards the end but that's what you train for, you got to be able to dig deep and you got to be able to you know keep going, never give up and the more I got into the swim the more determined I was going to be pulled out of that sea unconscious. I wasn't going to give up. No way. And once you're in and you're swimming, it's okay. And then once you get back out, you know, you feel great after it. It's hard to describe it. You get a great euphoria after afterwards. and you got to know what you're at. Definitely not for a newbie to jump into the water and with no experience because you'll get in trouble so and there's no shortcuts and safety you have to be very careful on things you know. So like you see me wearing the tow float okay you're not allowed to wear a tow float in the channel but it's a good uh, safety item to have especially if you're swimming where you have boats you're more visible and people can see you in the channel i reckon well the english channel straight across 21 miles so definitely i done double that distance with again it was tidal assisted with the tide pushing me north and then pushing me south probably close to 50 miles My coach had warned me that I was going to hit a lull and that a lot of people get depressed after it because they've trained or trained, they've swam the English Channel or swam, they've achieved their goal and now they have nothing to train for. So 
after I got back, I was in the water after three days, back into my training again, and I was already looking at my next target.